That sauce is drinkable. Okay. Oh, it got two thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Angela, two thumbs up. It's a special day over here. Hi, I just did that. Somebody said double the meat. Double the meat. I like it. That's how we roll. So every week I show up on Friday with three new recipes. And if that sounds like something that you would love, you should definitely stick around and hit that subscribe button. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. If you are new here, I upload twice a week, usually on Tuesdays and Fridays. Both days are about food, me in the kitchen creating yummy food. Tuesday's recipe and topics can vary, but Friday I'm always here with winter dinners, meaning we have found recipes, we've tried them, we have deemed them winners, and now we are sharing them with you. This recipe I'm making tonight came highly recommended from my friend Amber. I call her Glamber. She has a YouTube channel called Feeding the Birds. This is a creamy Parmesan pesto skillet. Okay, I've got my basil pesto here and we're gonna add about three tablespoons of this to this bowl. We need about a tablespoon of olive oil. We need a couple of tablespoons of finely grated Parmesan cheese. So I'm just gonna do it by hand. This is what I use when I don't need a whole lot of cheese. It's probably closer to three tablespoons, but we love cheese, so it's gonna be okay. The recipe calls for Dijon mustard. I was out. So I'm just going to use what I got and that's spicy brown mustard. So we'll add in about a tablespoon of that. We only need a teaspoon of honey and we'll add in like a pinch of salt and just a little bit of pepper. We'll stir all of that together. Okay, I've got three chicken breasts here. It was actually two and I split one of them in half. I'm going to just do it. We're just going to go in. I'm going to grab a fork and kind of tenderize the chicken. Not really tenderized, but kind of poke holes in it so this flavor seeps down into it. I don't know that I'm supposed to rub it on both sides, but why not, right? And we're just gonna let this sit out at room temperature while I prep the veggies. This is pretty messy, but here we are, folks. As long as it tastes good at the end, right? I'm gonna wash my hands because we're gonna put this to the side and we're gonna chop up some veggies. One thing I don't have to chop up, I use the help of Publix, is my small mushrooms. I got these already sliced. You need eight ounces of those. I've got some asparagus here. I just need to trim off our ends. And then we're gonna cut these into about one inch pieces. I've got about a pound. I love asparagus. I am skipping another green ingredient in this recipe, and that is peas. I'm not a fan of peas. So the recipe called for a shallot. They didn't have shallots at Food Lion when I was there. I'm gonna use about, well, this is a small onion. We'll just go with the whole thing. Okay, I take that back. I'm just gonna do half of it. I'll put this in my onion keeper. All of that's chopped. Let's get all of our ingredients and head over to the stove. I've got this large skillet. We're gonna heat it to about medium high and let that heat up really good. I'm gonna also add some olive oil, just about a tablespoon. Our pan is good and hot. I'm gonna give you cheese, I promise. Can you, can you step out of the way though? I don't want you to get popped with grease. Come on, there we go. Our pan is good and hot, so we're gonna add in our chicken. So we're gonna cook it on this first side for about two to three minutes just to get it good and golden. We'll flip it and then we're gonna turn the heat down and we will cook it until it's done. Okay, I butterflied the big piece just because it was not cooking fast enough. So that helped. We're gonna tint that. Okay, we've got some charred bits in there, but the recipe says don't worry about that. So we're just gonna throw in a tablespoon of butter and another tablespoon of olive oil. Now to this, we're gonna add all of our mushrooms and we're gonna saute these. We're gonna stir them pretty often, but we're gonna saute them for about three to four minutes. And this is still on medium heat. Okay, it's been about four minutes. I've been going and kind of just scraping up the bottom. Um, the great thing about these caraway pans is it's so nonstick. So things scrape up really easily, even with just this really soft silicone spatula, but it's been the four minutes. We've got all of that sauteed down. At this point, you would add in your shallot. I don't have shallot, I have onion, so that's what we're gonna add in. I'm also gonna add in some seasonings. I have about a half a teaspoon of dried oregano and then a quarter teaspoon each of dried thyme and some red pepper flakes. I'm just gonna stir this around and we're gonna cook this for another two or three minutes just to soften the onion or the shallot. Gosh, it smells so good in here. Now it's time to move on. So we've got flour over here. We need about a tablespoon of that and we're just gonna sprinkle that in. And then we're also gonna be adding some minced garlic. It calls for six cloves, which makes my heart happy. So let's do that. We're just gonna stir this around and let this cook for about a minute. 
We're gonna turn the heat to low and we're gonna add in a cup of chicken broth. We'll need another cup later, but for now, just a cup. So I've got my other cup of chicken broth. I've got some cornstarch, about a tablespoon. Just kind of stir it around. It's already coming to a little bit of a simmer, which is good. Also to this, we're gonna add about a quarter cup of heavy cream. And we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. So turn the heat back up to about medium. Okay, now that it's come up to a simmer, I'm gonna let it simmer for about a minute just to let it thicken just a little bit. Now we're gonna add in about a fourth a cup of pesto. So probably two good spoonfuls. And we're gonna throw in our asparagus and let that simmer for a couple of minutes. It has been a couple of minutes. We are going to add the rest of our Parmesan cheese in. You want about a third a cup of finely grated. And my little cheese monster is still in here, so I'll make sure to give her some, do not fear. I'm just gonna stir that around and let it melt. And we're gonna add our chicken back in. I'm also gonna go ahead and turn this temp down to about low. Gracie, is that necessary? If y'all hear that noise in the background, that is Gracie eating out of her bowl. I guess she's eating because she's mad I haven't given her cheese yet. I don't know. Gracie, look. Grace. She always looks the wrong way. You want cheese? Almost got it. There you go. Ooh, that's good, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna let this hang out here for just a couple of minutes to heat our chicken back up, and then it's gonna be time to eat. Winner, winner, some kind of fancy chicken dinner. <laughs> what this is right here, I don't know. We got some shrooms and some of uh, asparagus. We don't have asparagus very often. We don't. I like it. I just don't ever think about it, quite honestly. My nanny. My grandma, I called her nanny on yeah. my mom's side. Yeah. She was the queen of asparagus. Really? That's what she was going to bring. I did not know that. For get together, she'd bring a little, like a little boat, <laughs> like a little shape, like a little boat, you yeah. know, a little dish. Would it have a sauce over it? It had a little sauce over yeah. it. Yeah. I think it was like a, maybe a cheese or something. I yeah. don't know. Huh. Anyway, she loves some asparagus. Did you like it back then? No. <laughs> I didn't have a particular taste for the <laughs> asparagus. <laughs> right. Mmm. Boy, that's good. You know what that reminds me of? What? Marsala. Really? Yes. Like a chicken Kinda marsala? A little bit. You know, okay. it's, it's re reminiscent of that. Okay. Really good flavors. Definitely get some sort of herbs in there or something. Okay. Yeah, I've got um, oregano and thyme in there. Yes. We had some couscous <coughs> left over, so that's what I warmed up. But this would be great with mashed potatoes, obviously. Oh, yeah. I just didn't want that couscous to go to waste. And it made it easier. I that didn't have sauce. to make mashed potatoes. That sauce is drinkable. First of all, this is delicious. Tiny bit of spice. You could always leave that red pepper flake out if you want to. And I love that the asparagus is included in the main dish. You don't have to make another green side. Just make some mashed potatoes and you've got a full meal. Any more from the commentator? Oh, all I got to say is amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 That's it right there. It's so good. Really, really good. It's very fancy too. It's like, it is. This would be good for Valentine's yeah. dinner. Yeah. It's like an upscale right. chicken dinner. Oh, what was that? Upscale is we dance with upscale. I reckon. Let me see that dance. No. <laughs> you get one time. <laughs> we can we can just replay. We don't we don't dance. That's not dancing. Baby, nothing you ever do is dancing. That's just a bodily tick. <laughs> <laughs> nothing you ever do is dancing. No. Let's just be real clear. Today we are making slow cooker beef ramen. Very simple ingredients that you probably already have on hand. So let's get started. I have my large skillet heated to about medium high. It's good and hot. We're gonna add in a pound of lean ground beef. We are just gonna cook this until it's good and brown. We don't have to add anything to it. And then this is gonna go directly into our crock pot. We had lunch today in the air fryer. That stuff is drying, so ignore that. This is not for dinner. It's kind of cool that today lunch was air fryer and now dinner will be crock pot. Okay, while well, that is over there cooking, let's slice up our red bell pepper. And I've got a couple of green onions here. I'm just going to roughly chop these. All right, that's all the chopping we have to do because I did buy matchstick carrots, so I don't have to worry about that. So there we go, let's head back over to the stove. All right, this is done. Let's turn that off and let's head over to our crock pot. 
I am so weak. I need two hands. There we go. We're gonna add our one cup of matchstick carrots, our red bell pepper, and our scallions. That's gonna add a lot of flavor. Now in this bowl, we're gonna mix up the liquid. So I've got low sodium, I almost said soy sauce. I do have low sodium soy sauce too, but I have low sodium chicken broth. We need, basically you need a can of that, about 14.25 ounces, which is about a little over a cup and a half. I do have measurements on the side of this, so I'm just gonna use that to kinda eyeball it. We need half a cup of low sodium soy sauce. You can see I'm pretty much out, but I always have more in the pantry. So I'm gonna add about a half a cup of that. Again, I'm just gonna use the side to kinda see where I'm at. We need about three cloves of minced garlic, so ish, about a tablespoon. And we need a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar. I'm gonna whisk all of that together. And we're just gonna pour this over our beef. Stir that up. And we are gonna put this on low from for four to six hours. Now it is two o'clock, so I'm gonna start mine out on high for about an hour just to get it jump started. We have guests coming over tonight at seven, so I don't wanna still be cleaning up dinner. So I'm going to set it on high for just a little while first. So I'm gonna do high for an hour and then I will switch it over to low. Now, so I don't forget because it'll after that hour it'll go to warm. I am gonna tell Ziggy, set a timer for one hour. One hour, starting now. Okay, we've got about 30 minutes left, which is perfect. At this point, you can grab just two packs of just the regular ramen, but I had gotten this from Thrive Market not too long ago and we haven't used it yet. So if you're gonna use the regular packs of ramen that you get at the grocery store, you just discard the little flavor pack but we're gonna use two of these, so let me open it up. Okay, it says to use two of them, but I feel like they're a little bit smaller than the regular ramen, but they're thicker. So two is probably fine. Let's add that in these last 30 minutes or so. I'm going to push them down in there. Let's get it down. Oh, I just fog you up. That's what I do best, right? If you're new here, that's what I do. The last 30 minutes, we're gonna let that do its thing. It has been 30 minutes. We're gonna check on this and just see where we're at. Okay, the top of the ramen definitely is not done yet. I don't know if you can tell, the bottom is done, but the top that was exposed is not. So I'm gonna stir it around and we're gonna give it another 10 minutes or so. It fogged up my glasses. Is it fogging y'all up? No, okay. Um, we're gonna get it, give it another five, 10 minutes just to let that top layer do its thing because we don't want any crunchy noodles, you know? All right, it's been about seven or eight minutes. So it should be good. This smells so good. And I don't know if I said or not, but this makes about four servings. So if you need more than that, you can always double this up. All right, you ready? I'm ready, we're gonna tinky. <laughs> we're gonna tinky. My yeah. fingers are burning off. Mmm. It is good. That's tasty. But now, if you'd have told me this was beef lo mein, I'd been like. But it's not beef lo mein. What is it? It's beef ramen. Oh, ramen. I thought you said it was lo mein. Okay. I want to spice mine up a little bit. We're down to the last little bit. The seasonings, it really enhances that beef. Oh, yeah. I can't even get the lid off. I don't want to get the lid off. Because it won't squirt out. Oh, man. We got to doctor it up a little bit here. I'm going to let him do that and I'm going to keep eating. Did you fix it? No, we're gonna see. You hey. did. Oh, oh. Definitely, you should I make love this. Love the flavors in that. It's mm -hmm. really, really good. I mean, like, it doesn't taste like anything that you imagine a ramen pack mm -hmm. tasting mm -hmm. like. It's ten times better than oh, that. Oh yeah, like it's really good flavors. That sweet, in with that. Um, soy sauce mm -hmm. and then a little spice in there. I'm just gonna keep stuff in my face. We'll see y'all later. Mm -hmm. We've got one more meal to make and that means it's subby supper night. This is just called hamburger pie. It only uses four main ingredients plus some butter and it's gonna take hardly any time to make. I'm gonna do some sweet potato fries in the air fryer, make a little bit of a salad from our garden, 
perfect dinner. This recipe comes from Angela. Angela has been a nurse for 15 years. Her and her husband have been married for 17 years, but been together for 21. They have six children, three girls, three boys, and three grandchildren. She said her love language is definitely cooking. Her aunt gave her this recipe 27 years ago when she was pregnant with her first daughter. And because the ingredients were so simple, she's just kept it in rotation ever since. Let's preheat an oven, shall we? This time to 375 and my cat is screaming at my feet because she knows I grabbed the cheese out. I know. Are you so excited? We're also gonna heat this pan to about medium high so we can cook our hamburger meat or our ground beef. Do y'all call it hamburger meat? I'm so guilty of that. I don't have the cheese yet. Give me a minute, okay? I see you licking your little lips. I see that. Okay, so we're pretty much gonna shred an entire block of cheddar cheese. I think I should have got a, gotten a bigger bowl. Gracie says I can help with that. You want some cheese? Here you go. There you go. I have this other half used, not quite half used, Monterey Jack. Let's just, let's, let's play with this one a little bit. We're gonna go with Monterey Jack because cheese is cheese and we love all cheese, so we're gonna go with it. I'm gonna give some more cheese to the cheese monster. You need more? Okay. Yes, I'm in my pajama bottoms yet again. If you were here last week, I did this too. Oh, and I have a string. Do you see the string? <laughs> it's not cheese, babe. <laughs> okay, our pan is hot. Let's add in two pounds of ground beef. Hi, I just did that. I propped it on this candle stand and it didn't fit and I knew that, but here we are. So <laughs> you'd think it's my first day of filming. I've got two pounds of ground beef. We're gonna cook that until it's done and then I'll drain off any grease that I need to drain off. You really would think it's my first day filming. Okay, <laughs> can of crescent roll dough going to the bottom of a greased nine by 13 dish. This is ready to go. I'm gonna go back over to the stove and check on our ground beef. It's getting there. Now for this recipe, even though it's two pounds of ground beef, you only need one can of manwich. I always get the bold just because that's what we like, but this is not a true sloppy Joe meal. So it's gonna have all the flavors of this, but it's not gonna be as sloppy as a sloppy Joe because normally it's one pound of meat, one can of this. Okay, I used the little paper towel trick. I got out most of our grease. I'm gonna throw this away. And now to this, we're just gonna add that can. Honey, it, it's really okay. I don't have cheese. We're gonna add the can of Manwich. And it says season to taste, so I may add just a little bit of seasoning. I'm thinking that adobo seasoning, is that what it's called? This, we're gonna use that. Excuse, excuse me, oh thanks. You're bound and determined to get more, aren't you? I'm gonna taste this. Let me grab a little spoon. Oh, that's good. My, th my thumb is not in focus. But it's good. Okay, we're just gonna spread the meat mixture onto our crescent. We're gonna top that with our cheese. Okay, and now we're just going to top that with the other crescent roll, roll. Crescent rolls, rolls, roll. You know what I mean. Okay, well, this one's not gonna be as easy to do because it's going on top, so I need to unroll it before it goes on. Plop goes the weasel. <laughs> she is as good as she's gonna get. Now I need to melt some butter. I've got about three tablespoons. I'm gonna go do that. That's probably too much. <laughs> probably just needed two, but we're just gonna brush this over the top. And she said to add sesame seeds. I don't think I have any. Let me go look for those cre or the crescent rolls. The sesame seeds, be right back. Yeah, that's a no. So this is going in the oven at 375 for 12 to 15 minutes until it's golden brown on top. It's time to see what this bad boy is made of. Oh my goodness. I doubted that our crescent roll was done. It didn't look done, I guess because I'm used to it rising more, but it's definitely done. Gracefully getting this first one out is not, it's not it, Mandy. Yeah, it's a mess, but that's all right because I have a feeling it's gonna taste really yummy. The second and third one came out super easy. It's just getting that first one out. All right, let's grab some sweet potato fries and we're ready to eat. Are you excited? I am excited. Neither him nor Cole know anything about this. Oh, Cole is happy. The, the look on his face, y'all. One thing I know is this is Subby Supper sent in by or from Angela. Yes. That's all I know. Yep. I don't know what this is. It's good. That's what it is. Wow. 
Mmm. It's almost like a barbecue beef hash. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. very similar to a barbecue beef hash. Yep. Which I haven't had in a long time. Okay. Mmm. So it's not quite as sloppy as normal sloppy joe because no. it has double the meat. Somebody said double the meat. Double the meat. I like it. That's well, how we roll. I like I like that a lot. This the flavor in this is really good. It's very reminiscent reminiscent of a uh, a sloppy joe, but there's a little bit more of a barbecue flavor to it. It's probably the manwich that I use. Maybe it's the, the manwich. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's what it is. Man, use the bowl then. Yeah. That's that's some good stuff. Well, but good. Yeah, really good. It's called hamburger pie. Okay. Oh, it got two thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Angela, two thumbs up. It's a special day over here. Man, cheese in there too. Mm-hmm. Plenty oh, of cheese. Oh yeah, I see that cheese in mm -hmm. there. It's piled in there. It is. Well, I am so glad that this is acceptable for y'all. Mm -hmm. They are so happy. Cole said, is there more in there? You want some crescent roll? She loves some carbs, y'all. All right. Here you go. Happy as can be. All right, we've got our sweet potato fries our hamburger pie, and our little salads. That is dinner on this Friday night. What happened? I went back. <laughs> I'm about to as well. You got to go back. Cole and Steven said this is a go-backer. <laughs> I saved plenty of room. I ate like a tiny lunch today, yeah. so I'm like. Right. You're going down. Mm. This is so good, Angela. I love it. It's perfect with these sweet potato fries and a little salad. This is comfort food. I think everybody would love this. So y'all oh, should yeah. make it. You agree? 